This is the first video in a series for PHP and developing PHP web pages. And in this particular video, we're going to go ahead and focus in on the Windows users and turning our computer into a fully fledged web server that can interpret PHP web pages. And now, by default, Windows cannot do this function. We actually have to install a couple different software applications. And there's a term that a lot of people use it's called a WAMP server, which is a Windows computer based web server that's going to be running the Apache web server software. Now Apache is the most popular web server that's out there and they've always been the most popular web server and uh, most of the web is based off of Apache's web server so that's going to be a very powerful web server for us to use as well as MySQL being a database that's going to be able to store things in the table fields and so forth records that we're working with on most databases and that'll be in more of the advanced features for PHP and then the last letter P for PHP is going to mean that our web server was going to interpret PHP pages which are going to allow us to communicate with the server itself from the web page and so that's a server side web language or web programming language that's going to be available. Below that I have the term LAMP and the only difference between that is it's going to be installed on the Linux platform and most of the web servers out there in the world are running on a Linux computer and so the second video of this series is going to be focusing on setting it up in Ubuntu Linux which is a very easy way to set it up on our particular computer. So when we're going to start, we need to turn this computer into a WAMP server, and we're going to go ahead and focus in on that. Everything that I'm going to do on this particular lesson is going to be free, which is amazing. We're going to use open source software that's out there. And so I'm going to go ahead and just open up my web browser, Internet Explorer, and I'm going to navigate to, I'll start off by going to Google to make it easy for us to find. And we're going to look at typing in WAMP server and you can see that I've got a link already popping up and I will tell you right now um, that the EN is going to be something you may want unless you can speak French because the default web page is in French however they've translated it to English for us and so I'm going to go ahead and click on the wampserver.com forward slash EN and you can see that it's currently in English if by chance you happen to type it in and you have French you can always come up to the corner and switch it back to English and so I'm going to go ahead and click on the downloads page and you can see here's our download and this is a web server WAMP server is an open source project and it is free for us to use now what I need to decide is whether I want to use the 32-bit or the 64-bit on my particular Windows computer I'm running a 32-bit operating system so I'm going to choose the 32-bit and I'll go ahead and click on that this little box is going to pop up and we can go ahead and fill out this form if you want to I'm going to choose to download it directly which is a little link right here and I'll click on that and it's going to open up the source forge net.net net page and it's going to, this is where the download is going to be um, coming from or hosted at and we're going to wait for this to there it is ask us to download and I'm going to go ahead and choose to save it and you can see it's going to take a little over a minute here for me to download so it's, I'll just wait here until this downloads and after the file has completely downloaded I can go ahead and close everything that I've got open now I'll close all tabs and mine downloaded to the downloads folder so I'll just click on computer and then I'll find downloads there you can see there's my WAMP server and I usually t tend to run applications that I want to install as a administrator just in case there's any problems with permissions so I'm going to go ahead and run that as the administrator and just choose yes and I've got the little wizard that pops up for this. This is Welcome to the WAMP Server 2 Setup Wizard. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And I'm going to accept the license agreement. Of course, if you would like to, you can definitely go through and read the license agreement. And I'm going to go ahead now and just move on. And so now it's asking us the location that's going to be saving it or telling us the location that's going to be saving to. It's going to be going to the C slash WAMP folder. And so this is where the entire package is going to be installed. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next for this one here. We've got the option to choose a quick launch icon and a desktop icon. I do want to have those because it makes it a little bit more convenient to work with. So I'm going to go ahead now and hit next. And I've got the summary of everything that's going to happen. I'm just going to go ahead and choose install now. And it's going to run through this wizard. We're going to have a couple more dialog boxes that are going to pop up that we'll need to use. And you can see it's now going to ask me the default browser that I'm going to use on my computer. And right now I've only got Windows and Explorer installed. And so I do want to use Explorer. It's located in the C and in the Windows folder. So all I need to do now is hit open. And it's going to go ahead and finish this installation there. It says please specify the SMTP server and the address mail to be used by PHP when addressing the mail function. 
and so I can go ahead and say the SMTP server if I had one I'm gonna go ahead and just choose to use localhost and you at your domain for now because I do not have this set up as a mail server so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the default set up for now and just choose next and now we've got the option to launch the WAMP server to now so I'll choose finish and so I'm gonna go ahead now and just hit close on that downloads folder and you can see down here we've got the WAMP server mine happened to go over here in this little area to condense my taskbar here but we've got a little symbol for the WAMP server I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and you got a couple different options that are going to appear here you've got um, basically it's right now it's offline and so my web server currently is not running but I have the option to put it online I can go ahead and click on that and it's going to run through and put it online you can see that currently it's yellow it's going to go ahead and change color for me here in a second now it's back to green if I hover over and you can see the WAMP server is currently online which means it is currently running the way that I can test this is just open up my web browser and type in localhost and that's going to refer back to my own particular computer and I'll just go ahead and hit enter and you can see that I've got a web page now localhost is a keyword that's going to go ahead and send out a request to view a web page on my own computer itself and so I can see this. Now another way to double check this if you're not familiar with localhost you can also type in an IP address which means if you go to start I could go to the command prompt here cmd and I can go ahead and type in IP config and I can see my web address is 10.0.2.15 on my computer this is for the local area connection so if I type that number in my web browser 10.0.2.15 see, let me retype that in here, 10.0.2.15, I hit enter, you can see it takes me right back to this address here as well, so this is the a, a web page that's currently running, a web server that's currently running, and I'm displaying a web page, by default it's this WAMP server configuration page that's set up, so that is working. Now the next step that I need to focus in on is I've got my web server up and running now and it can handle PHP pages but I also need to set up some kind of text editor for me to start writing code in. Now typically in a classroom environment I use uh, Adobe Dreamweaver however it is kind of costly and so what we're going to do is focus in on another alternative to that if you cannot have that application and that's going to be Notepad++. So I'm going to go ahead to my browser here and I'm going to go ahead and Google Notepad++ plus plus. And you can see it's already coming up here on the search engine if I go ahead and hit enter there the notepad plus plus dot org is the website that I am looking for so I'm going to go ahead and click on that one now you could write all of our code in any text editor that you have like notepad however the problem with that is there's so much syntax error possibilities when you use something like that that we want to try to use something that's going to go ahead and color code things for us as well as format it the way that we want so that's why we're going to use notepad plus plus because it is another free application and it does a good job of doing that and you can see here's my downloads page so I'm going to go ahead and choose download now and I've got the different versions of notepad plus plus and the first current one at the moment is version 5.9.8 so I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you can see that it is listed here so I'm going to choose Notepad++ 5.9.8 installer and we're going to go ahead and download that one so I'm going to choose to save it and we're going to wait for this one to download and now that it's downloaded I'm just going to go ahead and close this close my browser as well and let's go ahead and install this so let's go to the downloads page again I'm going to go to computer let's go to, to my downloads and then I'm going to right click here and run this one as administrator as well and choose yes I do want to choose English, so I'll hit OK. And it says, Welcome to the setup. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. I agree. And then this is the location that's going to be installing it C, Program Files, Notepad. I'll go ahead and hit Next. I'm going to leave everything default for this. I'll just go ahead and choose to hit Next. I can choose to have a shortcut on my desktop. I'll go ahead and put that one on there as well. And I'm going to go ahead and use, leave everything here to default. So I'll just go ahead and hit Install. It'll take a moment to install this and now I've got the ability to run it so I'm going to go ahead and hit finish and while that's loaded up I'm going to go ahead and close this folder and it starts off by giving us the change log that has happened since the previous version of Notepad++ and so this concludes the video on getting our computer set up to be used for 
a PHP web server.